Alright, hey guys, welcome back to another video, and this is the longer discussion video that I did speak of, and uh, let's go over these patch notes, let's talk about it, let's see what the good stuff is, the bad stuff, and pretty much my overall feelings of it. I'm going to link this down below, also I'm going to link down the, um, the other video I did, the quick overlook video, where I just go over like the big uh, parts of the patch, if you guys want to go just check that out. But uh, yeah, let's go uh, check it out and see what it's all about. Alrighty, so it's gonna be a long video. We're gonna see how long it is, but I, I, I think it's gonna be a long video. So let's do it. So single player, we got crashes. Um, so we got fixed a crash related to formation AI. Okay, fixed a quest issue. Fixed two crashes that occurred after a player cleared an alley. So that's in the town with the bandits. Fixed a crash that occurred when performing hostile actions against the neutral villages while serving as a mercenary. Okay. Anything crazy going on here? Uh, fixed a crash related to initial kingdom hero spawns. Fixed a crash that occurred when pressing the exit to the main menu button while while a conversation was active. I'm just looking for ones that maybe I got. Um, fixed a bug that crashed the game after gaining XP when the player was already at max level. I still don't know to this day what max level is. Um, no idea. I feel like I'm still going up levels, but I'm going up very, very, very 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 slowly so i have no idea what max levels even is uh fix a crash which occurred which, which appeared after changing an option in the options menu fix a crash that happened when the fight against the conspiracy quest timed out that's like the last quest you do huh okay fix a crash that happened when rotter ghost was executed in the rescue family quest Fixed a crash that occurred when entering the same village over and over again. Fixed a crash that occurred after offering a truce during barter. Okay. Very specific ones, but like always, they are very specific. And some people do get it. Most people don't. But uh, it's good that it, that it is changed overall. Alrighty. Uh, performance. Fixed a bug that caused performance drops of the world map after sound cuts out. The sound cutting out, cutting out and uh, cutting in after like multiple reloads is a real problem. Hopefully they do fix it. I don't know exactly how you fix it, but I know if you, um, you know, if you want to get a Lord on your side and you just continuously reload until he says yes, um, what happens after like the third or fourth reload is your sound just cuts in and out. It's like, it's like a do 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 and then it, and then it, and then it goes uh, in fully. And uh, it does get very annoying, and in the in the latency of that just keeps increasing after every um, reload. Hopefully that is fixed, but I don't know how you would exactly fix that. And then we got save and load. I love uh, save and auto saved. Um, let's call it what they're doing with it. I really like the uh, idea of having three auto save slots, and a lot I've seen a lot of newer games, especially like Assassin's Creed that I play a lot of now. Um, that also has multiple auto save slots, and I think it's a great feature. And I did, you know, I stood on that hill when everyone was saying it was a bad feature. I stood on that hill and said it was a good feature. And now they added an interval that you can increase and decrease. We saw that in the previous video. Also, uh, the auto saves, uh, they, they kind of change them, and they give you a notification now, which is great to see. Uh, you do see it's very, it's like right there in the middle of the screen. Um, so very good to see and then obviously the daily gold sometimes it hit multiple times if it's a really old save but now it should not it should be uh like usual once per day localization we got text edition spell checks and punctuation fixes okay and then we have chi chinese localization fixes there it is then for art we have nav mash id changed uh for better ai behaviors in front of castle gates okay uh, we have visual improvements on Kazate, Vlandian, and Empire Villages. I really wish they would give like some type of screenshot because I have no clue what any of these villages mean by name. But um, yeah, they should probably give a screenshot in my opinion, but there you go. Then we have physics problems on some castle walls and roofs are uh, solved in the Tsegian uh, Castle. If I pronounce something wrong, I don't want to hear it, alright? Just saying. Uh, next we got is in order to have a better balance between ranged and melee troops, high ground areas and their connections between each other were reduced in number of, in number in, uh, that castle. So th that had a lot of different changes, this castle in particular. Now it's easier to reach higher grounds where there's probably archers, so it's going to be a lot easier to siege. Okay. 
They have assigned alpha versions parallax to materials with parallax. I have no idea what that means. Uh, visual improvements on Batanian Keep and Gatehouse models. Okay. Improvements to existing campaign map icons. Good to see. Added new cradle model. There it is. Alrighty, let's get into some of the bigger changes now. So we got UI changes, always good to see. I love the UI change. I love how they keep expanding the UI and it's great to see every patch in my opinion. Um, so added autosave interval control on the campaign options. Like I said, you can like have it like every like what? What is it, every minute or you could have it every 60 minutes. Depends what you wanna do. And the default is 15 minutes. I think if you're playing and you do experience like a little bit of crashing. I think every, I would say personally, every 10 minutes is a, is a good place to be. 10 to 15 minutes, any, any like option between there is pretty good in my opinion. Uh, or you could do every five minutes, it's up to you really. Um, then we have added marriage slash non-married filters. It's cool, you get to kind of see exactly who's not married. And I did um have that suggestion in one of my videos, but I'm pretty sure other people had it in the forums as well. So uh, good fix. Not good fix, but good addition. Then we have added explanation tooltip to the tax value in town management. So what this does is really like if you highlight the, like where the taxes are coming from, there's only two things they can come from, which is prosperity and how far your marketplace is upgraded. So it doesn't give you too much information, but it's good that it gives you some information, right? And obviously you can hover over all the parts of the town to give you the, you know, the breakdown on how it's being counted, if you didn't know. Then we have added explain. Oh no, we just read that. Uh, then the next one. Now the equip button in the inventory will replace the same type of weapon if there is one equipped. Very cool, in my opinion. So let's say you have a sword and a shield equipped. Um, if you go into your uh, inventory, let's say you have like ten different swords and ten different shields. You can click on any of those swords if they're you know the same type of sword. If it's a one-handed sword and you want to, if you have a one-handed sword currently equipped. And let's say you want to equip a different one-handed sword in your inventory. You don't have to drag one out and then put the other one in. You could literally click, um, there's an equip button on the um, unequipped swords in your inventory on the right side. You can uh, click on the weapon that you want, press equip, and it's going to automatically switch them over if it's the same weapon. So very cool. Uh, it's very nice. It works for armor too. It works for all the stuff. So for horses, for the armor, and for your weapons. So very cool. Uh, then we have army overlay can now show more than 18 parties in the army. So it's more kind of obviously it's visual, you know, UI, but um, yeah, you can see more of your parties there. It's no longer blocked. Good to see. And I'm pretty sure why they did this was because um, of this change down here. We're going to get to it, but I want to see if I can just really see it really quick. Where is it? Where in the world is it? Um, I feel like they did this change where it's like you can see more than 18 parties because there's a lot more parties in the game now due to... If I could just find it, really. I really can't find it. Well, where, whatever it is. Um, yeah, I really can't find it. But um, you can now... Oh, no, here it is. So they enabled AI marriages, which is gonna, uh, you know, make more children in the process. And also they gave most clans uh, more adult members to lead parties and also children to some of the clans to ensure better long-term uh, continuity. So a lot more parties are gonna be on the map now. Therefore, um, this does make sense to, uh, where is it? That the army overlay can show up to 18 parties or show more than 18 parties. So, uh, because there's going to be a lot of parties, going to be a lot bigger uh, armies now. And uh, so do expect that. A lot bigger armies. Then we have barter offered uh, item amount is now an editable text area. This is huge. It should have been there from the start, but now it is there. So now whenever you do barter, you don't just have to use the, um, the slider. You can now actually type in how much dinars you want exactly. And this was needed because a lot of times you got a really bad deal, but now... You can actually, you know, get the right deal that you need to get. Then we have players can now uh, load save games with double click. Kind of cool. Makes sense. Uh, then we have fixes, fix long party names overlapping weight values in the inventory screen. So if you had a really long party name, 
you know, uh, <laughs> this is mostly, like, I feel like people make really long party names, but, like, for memes, pretty much, and it's, like, that's the only reason that it would, it would overlap the inventory screen. I feel like people who are being serious, they don't really have that big or long of a name. And they're like, oh my god, this is so inconvenient. I feel like it's just for the memes. I think they want it to overlap the weight values, if that kind of makes sense. But uh, a cool fix. Then we have fixed a bug that caused UI to disappear after inspecting a companion's troop while talking. There it is. Then we have fixed minor visual issues in the tournament prize panel. All right, so the prize are a little bit changed. Then we have fixed a bug that showed uh, swap values for casualties inflicted for a diplomacy war item. Okay, I don't know exactly what that means, but okay. Fixed a bug that shows swap values for casualties inflicted. Okay, so the casualties inflicted obviously are in uh, the page where it shows everybody who's at war with you or currently at peace with you. And if you click on them, it shows who inflicted the casualties. I guess the numbers were uh, messed up, but uh, now they should not be. Then we have fixed a bug in the army nameplate that caused an uh, issue icon to be visible and not visible even through the Lord with the issue hasn't joined the army yet. Sorry, there was something going on in the background. So I have to kind of like, I was kind of like halfway focusing on the screen, halfway focusing on what was going on. My bad. Let me get back into it. Uh, let's read this one more time. So fix the bug in the name in the army nameplate that caused an issue icon to be visible even through even though the Lord with the issue hasn't joined the army yet. Jesus, that that is Oh okay, so this is pretty much saying that um Lords with issues that haven't joined the army yet, it shows an army it shows um, an issue icon on the army nameplate, even if that lord with the actual issue isn't in the army yet. Okay, that makes sense. It was kind of just weirdly written. Alrighty, uh, next one we have is battles and sieges. So this is a big one. So they added minus 20% damage and weapon speed slash reload penalty for using weapons while mounted. This is lowered by the riding skill and reaches zero penalty at 100 this effect only applies to troops and characters in single player mode. Some mechanical weapons such as crossbows are exempt from the damage penalty. All right, here's what I gotta say. This is a good change. Um, I think that um, in terms of the player, it's very easy to reach uh, level 100 in riding and it kind of makes sense. If you're not good at riding, you shouldn't be good at uh, you know having a weapon while riding. Makes a lot of sense. It's gonna make uh, early game a little bit harder for like bow players. I'm a bow player, so it's gonna make it a little bit harder because I like to be on a horse and shoot a bow as I'm kind of running away from uh, like looters and low level uh, enemies. But it is what it is. And then also, this will affect troops in a huge way because like I stated, I feel like um, lower level troops, I know this is only for mounted troops, right? But um, lower level troops shouldn't be as accurate or do as much you know damage as higher level troops if that kind of makes sense right like i wouldn't expect a militia archer to be as accurate as a veteran you know veteran crossbow tier six archer right i said veteran crossbow but like you know what i mean like like a a very like a veteran troop that's like tier six and a militia um archer that's tier one shouldn't have the same accuracy and stuff like that and hopefully they look into that as well but this is a good step in the right direction when it comes to mounted units in my opinion uh the whole um you know crossbows are exempt from the damage penalty and uh, i guess it kind of makes sense because crossbows it's not like you're pulling your, it's not like pulling your bow back where it's kind of like the strength of the character it's more of like you know the mechanisms inside the crossbow so it kind of makes sense now that i think about it a little bit more but um they could have they they could have they, they added this 20 percent as well but i kind of get what their uh, reasoning behind it all right next one heroes will no longer receive medicine skill experience for team kills and battles so what i used to do and what a lot of other people used to do in the beginning of the game when it first came out is um after a battle was complete you would grab a mace which is a blunt object and you would hit your characters down one by one it would level up your medicine skill very quickly because you your medicine your medicine skill levels up when your characters um get wounded and then um over time as they get back to full health then they patch that and then uh what i suggested i even made a video on it was to use blunt arrows and do the same exact thing and that worked now you can't do it either way so now it's pretty much impossible to do i think it's a good fix though uh, it was kind of an exploit 
and I think it's uh, good to see that it is fixed. Then we have some archery points and siege scenes uh, were not being removed as expected when certain objects like walls and broken versions of walls were swapped around, uh, causing archer agents trying to go to undesirable decisions. So pretty much what they um, what they mean by this is, let's say you took down all the walls in the sieging process of like an, you know an, of an actual siege, the one where you're kind of still on the map, like shooting the um, your siege engines or shooting their siege engines and uh, vice versa. So once you do that, you take their walls down and uh, you start the um, siege, like the attacking uh, part of the siege. And uh, what happens is archers or even infantry, they would get into like these positions that are super, super open and uh, it would be super easy to take them down. And I'm guessing after this now, they're going to um, make better decisions. So better AI movement when it comes to where they're going to sit. And I think that's kind of good. Uh, next we have is moving information uh, speed limits were not applied properly They have been fixed and speeds were reduced overall. This is especially noticeable in shield wall circle and square arrangements Okay, so if you are using one of these formations, you're gonna move a lot slower now. They were reduced overall, so I don't know if that's good or bad. I don't really use formations much. I kind of you know stick to the basics f1 f2 f1 f3 and you know you go from there but um and also f3 f3 which is like the loose formation but that's like the only formation i really use um yeah we're gonna see what this really does then we have uh when troops with ranged weapons were given the charge order they didn't approach the enemy if there if there was a friend in the way this was fixed moving sideways to try to see enemies past friends was also added making giving the charge order without telling troops to hold fire much more effective. There it is. So now they're going to go um, kind of like sideways, move around the characters to kind of get, um, what's it called? To kind of get their shot in. So uh, very good. I agree with this. I, you could even see it a lot of the times. Let's say you told archers to like kind of like stand still but still fire. Um, if you are like on a horse or something like that, if you get in front of those archers, they're going to stop firing because you're obviously in front of them. And hopefully now they're going to just, you know, move over a little bit to the side and continue firing. I think that's a very, very good change in my opinion. Uh, next we have is due to an error in updating the target agent after the target was killed, they moved back a few steps. Ranged uh, troops tended to face away from the enemy. This was fixed. Interesting. Good fix. Then we have fixed a bug that caused formations to fidget about when trying to hold a defensive position. Hopefully they're talking about the AI because I, I've seen the AI do this a couple of times where they're just gonna they're gonna stay in this one general area, but their troops are just gonna shuffle back and forth, like a sidestep there, sidestep there, just continuously. And it would mess up my archers, it would mess up their formation, just overall it was kind of weird. Hopefully that's what they mean by that fix. Then we have implemented a new system that calculates troop power based on context. Remove cavalry troop simulation bonuses for sieges. This is huge. So the cavalry troop uh, simulation bonus is, I think it's like, what, 20% for cavalry when it comes to, um, before it, it was when it comes to any simulation, which is either a battle or a siege. But now it's only for battles and it's not for sieges, which makes complete sense because in sieges, there's really no cavalry. And to be honest with you, I don't get why there isn't no cavalry in sieges. Have you guys ever thought about that? I feel like it'd be very cool if there actually was cavalry in sieges and once the gates were open, you had the option to um, run the cavalry in. I think that'd be very cool. Or, you know, if, if you're defending, you'd still have cavalry and maybe like run out. Um, I don't know if they're going to go in that position. I don't think they're going to do that. But it does make sense since there is no cavalry really in sieges, there shouldn't be any simulation bonuses for cavalry units when they have no horse. So, uh, makes sense. Then we have light crossbows are reloadable on horseback now. Some of the heaviest crossbows are capable of penetrating shields. That's crazy. So light crossbows are reloadable on horseback now. There you go. I heard some people in my Discord. Um, by the way, quick Discord shout out. We had a lot of good conversations today on the Discord. Uh, go join it. A lot of Bannerlord conversations on there. So uh, go join the community. Uh, link will be down below. But yeah, um, a lot of people did like this on the Discord. And also... Um, this is actually pretty interesting and it makes sense because um you know very trained crossbowmen with very strong crossbows uh historically they could penetrate shields they could penetrate armors like plate armors you know all that stuff so makes sense 
Um, then we got character development systems. Alrighty, so we have uh, added 10 more combat related tactics perks to the game. So um, tactic per the tactics skill tree is finished. We have medicine uh, perk effects, which is like the secondary effects were added. Um, but the medicine perk tree is not done yet. Then we have, and by the way, if you guys don't know, I always want to say this. Combat related perks are everything that has to do with fighting, doing damage, or defending from damage. And then campaign sided perks are everything that isn't combat related. Just so you guys know. Um, then they said they fixed the speed bonus for siege engine construction of the sweatshop perk of the steward skill. So it was too good. It was a flat bonus of 20, but it is now only, but now it is 20%. Um, then they fixed a bug that caused troops to appear. Oh yeah, before we do move on, I noticed that there's some um, leadership. Um, me and a couple other people on Discord noticed that there's some leadership perks that were added as well, but aren't in the patch notes. And I would even say there was some uh, steward skill um, fixes as well that was not on the patch notes. Because uh, both of those skill trees like reset, and whenever they do, whenever they add a lot of new perks and stuff like that, um, usually what happens is the skill trees, they reset completely and they let you kind of like repick what you want to, uh, pick because obviously they changed up. Um, and those two were uh, reset for me. It was stewardship, leadership was reset for me, tactics was reset for me, and so was medicine. So, um, I don't know why they didn't put it in, maybe they missed it, maybe they kind of, you know, um, I don't know, mistakes were made, but, uh, I did see that changes were made to that as well. Then we have fixed a bug that caused troops to appear as old or young. I don't really care about this, but you know, good fix. Then we have fixed a bug that caused children to show up in the inventory screen as selectable. Interesting. Then we have fixed a bug that caused the player to heal immediately just by waiting on the map. I wish I had that bug, but um, good to see that it is fixed. Alrighty, clan and party. Band of parties which were close to hideouts were attacking other stronger parties because they assumed that parties inside the hideout would help them. However, this was not the case. This will no, they will, uh, they will no longer make this assumption. Let it be said, I was the first one to make a video on this. Um, I found this out very, very early into the game's launch, where if you have a good-sized army from like 30 to 50, or just below 50, you can stand right next to a hideout and parties of five troops, parties of like 20 troops, they were all going to fight you one after the other. All you have to do is just stand right next to the hideout and it would be like an easy farming location. Rest in peace to that uh, trick or that exploit, whatever you want to call it. It wasn't game breaking. I feel like exploits makes makes it sound like it's super game breaking, but it's not. But it does make sense that this was fixed, so uh, good fix. Then we have fixed a bug that leaves the main hero spouse and the main party in a fugitive state. There it is. Uh, then we have enabled AI marriages to occur over time. Huge. This is a huge change. More marriages, more children, more people to the party. Obviously, we have the deaths enabled in the game now, so we need something to give life as well. We need the balance. Then uh, this was also a huge one. Huge, huge, huge. Um, they gave most clans enough adult members to lead the minimum number of parties. So based on tiers, I forgot exactly how it works, but um, the higher the tier, the more parties that um, a clan can have. And until now, if um, a clan member died, um, they would never really be replaced by another clan member um, in their in their clan, pretty much, that can actually have a party. Like They might have children, they might have a wife, but those... The wife or children are never going to start parties and roam the map. Sorry about that. That was pretty loud. Just randomly always pops up. Then we have, um, they also added children to some clans to ensure better long-term uh, continuity. Um, very good. The children, uh, they, I don't know if it was the last patch or the patch before that, but the children um, can now, once they turn 18, start their own parties. So added, so starting their own parties plus this. I think is very very good very very good it's gonna have a lot more parties expect a lot bigger fights expect you know like expect like because like before this some clans would just be so like in my opinion so underwhelming like you would see tier five clans with one or two people you would see you know what i mean like stuff like that and it was just it was very underwhelming and you would try to get them on your side and they would want 1.2 million because probably i don't know how the code works but the code is probably like, oh, this is a tier five clan, so they should ask for more. 
they're not putting into effect that they don't have much and they don't have any um they don't have that much parties involved in their uh clan but hopefully this um this does what it says it does because this is huge in my opinion um you know if like if we could have like this continuous like what would you call it um because right now if if uh clan members die it's kind of forever and then you know no one really takes their spot but if we, if we could have this continuous like flow of people taking their spot you know people growing into the age of taking their spot and starting their own parties you first of all you're going to see a lot of new lords on the map that you haven't seen previously um because before they would become they would become adults from being children and they would never start a party so you would never really talk to them you would just see them in like the encyclopedia and stuff like that but now you're going to see a lot of new parties roaming around because obviously they were children and then they turned to adults and then they started running their own party so very cool very, very interesting and a very good change overall already armies so they fixed the bug that allowed lords lords in a player's army to recruit from raided villages it's a, another little exploit i used to use where obviously even if it's a raided village you can just pop by and um what's it called your other clans in your army will just still stock up on troops very it, it, it was it was cool but uh, I, I i understand why the change was needed they have kingdoms and diplomacy so they fixed the bug that caused dead heroes to participate in kingdom decisions like votes Makes sense why it was fixed. Then we have fixed a bug that led to mercenary clans defecting as vassals to other kingdoms. Makes sense. Then we have fixed an issue that stopped kingdom decisions from properly resolving when the player joined the kingdom as a mercenary. So here was the issue. If you joined as a mercenary, you can't vote. You're not a vassal. Um, vassals can vote. The ruler can vote. But uh, mercenaries cannot. Now, uh, the problem was um, whenever you joined a kingdom, whenever they would vote for peace... They would require player interaction. The problem is if you're a mercenary, you can't vote. So therefore, that vote would never be made and uh, peace would never be made. So um, if you joined a kingdom um, as a mercenary, eventually they would be at war with everybody making zero peace. And um, in a way, it would become very, very hard. But now they will resolve it without, um, without you if you are a mercenary. So very good change in my opinion. Now we have economy and trade. Let me take a real quick drink. So they fixed a bug that prevents the effects of daily settlement projects. Good to see. So some of the daily settlement projects weren't really working, but um, now it's fixed. Then they fixed an issue that caused caravan speeds to drop once to speed because they were buying too many animals. Um, obviously because we got the herd, uh, the herd, um, the speed reduction you got from like having a lot of uh, animals, like um, the herd speed reduction, where you where you have too many animals and you really slow down. It really affected caravans because they used to buy a lot of animals, but now if they now they have a limit, and if they sell a little bit more over the limit, if they um, get a little bit more over the limit, they're gonna sell the the excess uh, animals when they enter the next town. And sorry if I'm kind of stuttering all this stuff. It's kind of late. It's like 2 a.m. here. I've been up for like the whole day, but uh, you gotta do what you gotta do. Alrighty, then we have fixed the problem with tanneries not making any profit and closing all over the world in uh, the long term. Uh, that is now fixed, so tanneries will be a little bit more profitable. And also, a very cool sight to see, all workshops are a bit more profitable now. Good to see, in my opinion. Alrighty, then we have crafting. So these were kind of like miscellaneous, I didn't really include any of these but um, in my uh, quick overlook video. So they have missing slash invalid damage type strings were fixed. Okay, then we have fixed an issue with some uh, with some crafted two-handed weapon blades not appearing from the character's back after drawing the weapon. So it's kind of like, you know, visual problems. Then we have fixed a bug that caused the wrong tooltip and description to show at the smelting and refining screen. So kind of UI and kind of visual problems overall. Now, settlement actions. We have town, village, castle, and hideout. So uh, players are no, lo are no longer able to form caravans or buy workshops while in disguise. Makes sense. You shouldn't be able to really do that. And um, I don't know exactly how it would affect the game. If it's just like, if it affected the game negatively by doing that. But um, now you can't do it. Then we have players can no longer heal by entering and leaving the training arena. So I'm wondering if it was an automatic heal when you entered and left the training arena before. 
but uh, you can't do it anymore. But that would have been a pretty cool exploit if I didn't know about it, but I did not. Uh, now we have quests and issues. Um, still not very happy with quests in general. It's not the quest fault. It's not the devs fault. I understand where they're trying to go with quests. But again, like I've always stated, like I'm going to stay forever until it's kind of, you know, I don't even know if it's, it is going to be changed. They just, they're not significant after like a good two hours into the, any game save that you really do. Uh, they're not significant enough to, to really do, um, in my opinion. I just, I just don't think they're significant enough. In terms of the gold, there's better ways to make gold or dinars. There's a better way to make, to make uh, dinars. In terms of reputation... There's better ways to make reputation. So, I don't know. That's just me. But, um, let's read it. So, quest battle AI aggressiveness improvements. So, quest NPCs will be more defensive and combat based on your skills. Good. They're going to put up a little bit more of a fight. Then we fixed a bug that caused some quest rewards to be floating point numbers. I don't know exactly what that means. Then we have uh, quest difficulties will now scale according to the player progress even uh, while the quest is ongoing. Good. We have some scaling, so we're we're, we're kind of getting there. You know, now that we have scaling, we're kind of getting there. But again, I need to see some, um, I need to see some quests that are viable to do when I'm starting a kingdom. I need to see some quests that are viable to do once I have a kingdom with a couple of clans and a couple of that. I need those type of quests because right now it just feels like quests you do when you're in the mercenary stage or when you're in the beginning of the game stage. But once you move up past that, quests just feel insignificant in my opinion um i'm not gonna i don't know if you, eh, i'll read some of these i guess uh crime rate will only be gained after the rejection of the counter offer and the quest okay so these are just quest specific again if you want to go read these they're right here on the screen they're going to be in the description below but i can't really even say much about it because the last time i've done quests was literally when the game came out i tried every single quest like one or two times other than that didn't really try them after that it was just meh in my opinion they're good quests like don't get me wrong they're good quests i enjoy doing most of the quests right but it's just the fact of the matter is they don't translate um mid and late game at all and that's kind of my issue with them then we have conversations and encounters fixed about that causes uh ransom brokers initial dialogue to be empty okay then we have fixed the bug that open prisoner conversation missions in a hideout with the lord's hall background scene Okay, so it showed the prisoner in the background scene in the Lord's Hall, which doesn't make sense. Then we have villagers and guards should change their dialogues if the player is a lord of their settlement or a faction ruler. Cool, more dialogues. Very nice to see. Uh, keep it up and keep bringing more dialogues. I would love to just go into a village and have conversations with people. I think that would be great. Then we have fixed a bug that caused lords to uh, comment on raids on their settlements as if the player had been responsible. Okay, so they would kind of be like angry towards you or... It's fixed though. There it is. Alrighty, moving on to other... So your basic units will no longer use polearm types of weapons as they were getting too good at stopping cavalry charges. Okay, so um, only the like, specific type of units and I guess in the higher level units will use polearm type of weapons. Uh, not the basic ones anymore. There it is. Uh, then we have removed the out of place shield from... Takios back. There you go, very specific. Then we have some Azari notables and peasants were wearing out of place armor. This was fixed. Uh, I heard that a lot of, um, from my Discord, that a lot of Azari had their armor reduced because of this change. So, um, yeah, we'll see if that's good or bad, really. They're saying it's bad. Then we have changed a few tournaments, loadout matches for Britannia and Azari. Fights between all ranged units and ranged versus two handers are, likely, are less likely to happen. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the uh, fight between all ranged units. I thought that was pretty cool, but um, I guess, you know, people didn't. So that's the consensus. That's the consensus. I could not get that out of my mouth. Um, then we have uh, changed armors and shields of caravan guards of Sturgia, Vlandia, and Empire. Changed armor and shields. Is it for the better? Is it for the worse? I have no clue yet. Like, was it a nerf or was it a buff? We'll see. Then we have added player spouse death notifications. Rest in peace. It is what it is. Uh, <laughs> um, I didn't know what, what to say as a description. So in my last video, I was like, it's a good notification to have, you know? But um, yeah. 
Uh, good addition, I guess, right? That we have fixed the bug that causes some dancers and beggars to spawn very young. Interesting. Okay, then we have uh, added an option to enable uh, slash disable birth, aging, and death in a campaign. With this option enabled, no new heroes will be born and no one will die in this game. So, what I noticed is now when you start a new game, you have to pick if you're going to enable or disable death and all that other stuff, right? And you don't get to really change it mid-game anymore. Uh, it's not in the campaign options when you already started a game. It's literally just in the beginning. So, you either choose it or you don't. So, um, some people will like that. Some people won't like that. Um, I'm pretty sure it would cause some bugs if you were to con consistently just like turn it on and turn it off So that's probably why they did it Then we have uh, item modifiers update while modifiers worked mostly as intended for armors They did not work correctly for weapons uh, Stats of weapons were not affected by them. That's fixed Not all items had the correct modifiers associated with them. That's fixed and then modifiers now affect stack count correctly large bag of works so mod item modifiers, sometimes they were good, sometimes they were bad. You saw like the, the bad ones are kind of like broken and this and that. So um, now they should work as intended. There we go. Uh, lame horse feature was implemented. When your horse goes down in a mission, there's a chance that it will go, uh, though it will get the lame modifier, which will affect the stats of it. I think this is amazing. I also would like that if the horse does go down, there's a chance that it might um, go down forever like that. It might be, you know, done for. Um, but they haven't done that, but I wish they did. Like, if there, there, sh there should be, like, a big chance of them becoming lame, but there should also be a very small chance of the horse dying forever. I think that would make a lot more sense. And it would. Um, this is still going to make players more um, aware and kind of cautious when it comes to, like, uh, taking horse damage. But um, if they ha also had, like, the little percent chance of just, you know, overall just getting rid of the horse in general... I think um, it would be a good change in my opinion. Then we have players can now forfeit board games on the enemy's turn. Okay. By the way, I am making um, guides to all the board games coming soon. I'm going to have a quick little series where I just, you know, go over every board game and kind of just, you know, it's going to have a, a, every board game is going to have its own video where I'm going to just talk about how to play, how to win, the strategies, and all of that. Uh, I did kind of like them. Um, I did play a lot of the board games during like one of the streams I did and uh, yeah by the way for people who are wondering about my streams I'm not streaming currently because of the, all the twitch drama right now I'm just gonna let all that kind of like figure itself out and then I'll start streaming again but um let's see the uh, last one uh, we have improved the replacement of invalid or deleted items with trash items this may help some corrupted saves and should make it less likely for corruptions to occur very good. So we uh, saves are going to be a lot more safer. And if, and if you did have a corrupted save, I would suggest you go check it out to see if it is fixed because there's a chance it might be. So overall, good changes. Alrighty, boys. So uh, the video is pretty long. It's almost 40 minutes. And if I continue to do the multiplayer, it's going to go past the one hour mark. I'm going to end it off here. I'm going to name it the, you know, single player changes in depth kind of discussion. I am going to... Um, Probably going to take a little quick break and I'm going to go record the multiplayer version of this as well. Where we go over all the multiplayer stuff because there's a lot there as well. But uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this discussion. Let me know what you guys think about all of this. Let me know your opinions of the patch and all of that. Uh, the link to the Overlook video will be down below. Um, and the multiplayer video will probably be out a little bit after this one is out. And uh, yeah, hopefully it was informative. Ask me any questions, concerns, and like always, stay safe.